Hello, hello! Welcome to another episode of History in the Dark. I am your host, Darkness the Curse. And before we begin, as always, thank you so much to my generous patrons, my British Rail critics, and of course, my underwater train finders. You are the reason why this content remains in a peculiar set of circumstances, and today we are going to discuss a really weird and unique situation that occurred during the infamous Vietnam War. There's a lot to unpack there, um, but we're going to kind of skip over that for now because, boy, howdy is that war just a major, major, major Pandora's box of nonsense. But this particular incident took place during the war, and it involved a UE helicopter and a biplane. And it was an incident where the CIA shot down a plane with a helicopter. Yes, really. It was the 12th of January, 1968, and things in Vietnam were fun for absolutely nobody involved. Operation Rolling Thunder was still in full swing, which was a multi-year sustained aerial bombardment conducted by the United States 2nd Air Division the U.S. Navy, and the Republic of Vietnam Air Force against the Democratic Republic of Vietnam, otherwise known as North Vietnam, otherwise known as Communist Vietnam, and they had just had about enough of this nonsense. Rolling Thunder had done significant damage to North Vietnam, and their military desperately wanted to strike back in some significant way. They had learned about a site that we called Lima Site 85, that sat on the border between Laos and North Vietnam. This particular site was a radar installation, and it was situated on top of a 5,800 foot mountain. The radar installation was actually pretty critical for the war effort on the US side, as it fed tactical data for precision bombing strikes. The North Vietnamese knew that if they took this site out, it would hamper the bombing of their forces in some small way. Additionally, this radar site was actually operated under the jurisdiction of the CIA. As you might imagine, the CIA had a pretty critical hand in the Vietnam War, as they were going to town during the Cold War in general, getting information on those filthy commies, and using it in the various small wars that were going on around the world. Laos was actually supposed to be neutral in the conflict, but they had allowed the radar base to be built anyway. North Vietnam at first thought that a ground assault against Site-85 was a bad idea. The elevation and terrain made this a really risky venture, but they did have a few aircraft of their own that might be able to do some damage to the site. These aircraft were AN-2 Colt fixed-wing biplanes. The Antonov AN-2 was a Soviet-built biplane that actually was not nearly as old as you think. They first flew on the 31st of August in 1947, and they're actually still flying today. They were a very successful plane, but they weren't really initially meant for military purposes. They were modified in some small ways for that, but they were really only designed for utility and agriculture. They've proven to be really flexible over the years, which is why they're still flying, but as bombers, they were questionable choices. But it was pretty much all the North Vietnamese had, and it was a small radar base, so they figured that the AN-2s should be enough. They sent out four of these planes. Under each of the lower wings was a 12-shot, 57mm folding fin aerial rocket pod. They also had 20 250mm mortar rounds that had aerial bomb fuses. They were modified with a hinge mechanism to allow these mortars to be dropped safely from the aircraft. And it was with these weapons that they planned on taking out this radar installation. Site 85 was actually manned mostly by some US Air Force airmen. They were sheep dipped, as they say, rather masquerading, as civilian employees of Lockheed Martin and Air America. There were also some local guerrilla fighters and a few mercenaries. The men at the base were actually genuinely shocked when the bombing raid began. They had not expected to be attacked in this manner, but they did react to the situation swiftly. Two of the AN-2s attacked first, while the other two circled around and waited for their turn. The radar installation was actually very well camouflaged, so they had to fly in close to see it. As the first plane began its run, a Thai mercenary, 
who was just apparently out of his mind, ran out into the open and emptied the whole clip of his AK-47 into the plane and brought it down. This apparently horrified the other AN-2 pilots, and they opted to, instead of continuing the attack, to turn around and just leave. That was, that was enough, and I get that. But as they were making their retreat, Captain Ted Moore and crewman Glenn Woods were inbound towards the site in their Air America UE helicopter, or UH-1. The UEs were a common sight in the Vietnam War. They were very, very, very good helicopters, and very prevalent. You've probably seen one in a movie or two. The men were bringing ammunition supplies to the site at the time, and they were shocked to see biplanes attacking it. The other interesting thing about the UE that Captain Ted Moore was well aware of was that the UE was actually faster than the AN-2s, and Glenn Woods had brought an AK-47 on board the UE at the time, so they decided to give chase to these aircraft. The UH-1 caught up very, very quickly, and it was in striking distance of the rearmost AN-2. The rearward visibility of the AN-2 is very limited, and the pilot didn't even realize the UE was there until it was way too late to do anything about it. The first thing that Moore did was fly above the biplane. This caused the downwash from the helicopter blades to shift the airflow on the upper wing of the biplane. This made the wing stall out, and though the biplane's lower wing was still working, the AN-2 did begin to lose altitude. The pilot of the AN-2 tried to lower his speed to fix the problem, which, to me, I think you'd want to do the opposite, but perhaps he knew the UE was faster than him, but there was really nothing he could do to avert the situation. Woods leaned out of the helicopter and emptied his AK-47 into the plane's cockpit. This killed both the pilot and co-pilot. The biplane went into a spin and crashed into the jungle. Instead of continuing to pursue the other AN-2s, Moore decided to turn around and head back towards Laos. This battle was inherently unique and still is in many ways. For one thing, it was the first and only time a helicopter in general had taken out a biplane. On top of that, it was the first recorded air-to-air -air victory for the CIA, and by some sources is still their only one, but that's debatable. But as unique as the story is, it really didn't matter much in the grand scheme of things. Vietnam was kind of a mess, and I think most people are well aware of that. And as for Lima Site 85, things would not actually go well for them. The North Vietnamese were not done yet, and now that they realized that biplanes just were not gonna cut it in this situation, they decided to bite the bullet and send in commandos. Two months after the incident, Site 85 was assaulted from the ground, and this would be a notable victory for the North Vietnamese. The attack actually resulted in the single largest loss of U.S. airmen in a ground assault during the Vietnam War. Well, that's depressing, but uh... Or as hell, I guess. Before we go, a special thank you goes out to all my underwater train finders. Thomas Ward, Lord Captain Von Frost III, Some Dude 267, Brightline Blue, Joshua Long, Ohio Trucker 1, Royal Hudson 2860, Lord Haas 444, Arthur Roy, Benjamin Owens, Panzer Kitsune 131-232, Mr. Black Rose, Tribal Typhoon, Master of None, Josh Johnson, and Lock Kraken. Till next time, this is Darkness, and I bid you all a fond farewell.